Hey gang, welcome back. If this is your first time coming in, I am the Articulate Grunt. Welcome to my channel. And this is my first chance at a follow-up vid. I'm actually going to be doing follow-up on two of my previous videos. The first piece was actually yesterday's birthdays, games, and the KKK. And I've got to send a shout out and a thank you to Tiger Wolf with Blue Eyes, who I've got to assume is one of my few subscribers, for sending me a link to a follow up to that story. In that, if you look back, you'll, you'll find that a young man has been playing Civ 2 for 10 years. Well, on Wednesday, it turns out Sid Myers himself put out a statement which basically accumulated to a short blurb saying, wow, it's really cool. You know, never thought somebody would be playing it for 10 years, and wouldn't it just be really cool if 15 years from now we looked back and found that somebody was still playing a game, for a you know, game of my Civ 5 for 10 to 15 years. That would be really cool. Of course, on Thursday, they just released an expansion. Basically, the day after he put out his little statement, they released an expansion for Civ 5 which, doing some investigation, I found pretty much nothing but bad reviews for from players. Apparently Civ 2 and Civ 4 are the best in the line. I haven't played Civ games in so long. I don't even, other than Alpha Centauri, I don't remember what version I played last. It's been years. But apparently Civ 2 and 4 are the best, and 5 pretty much sucks from what everybody I could find was saying. You know, a couple of professional magazines and reviewers said other things about it, but then again, I don't listen to them like I do to the players. Players play it and have nothing, you know, to gain from it. They don't have commercial rep, commercial revenue and things in their magazines and in their review places to depend upon. The players, you and I, that's what I look at, because... We literally have, you know, whether we liked it or not. We don't have to depend on, you know, reimburse, reimbursements or any kind of financial gain. Now, let's follow up number one. Number two, to feed or not to feed in public was from a couple of weeks ago. And you can look back. I'll put a link down below. Was basically, I went into a couple of Air National Guard soldiers who, in support of, I believe it was called Moms to Moms, a pro-breastfeeding organization, posed for photographs in their uniforms breastfeeding their kids. A whole bunch of people were up in arms, you know, got all mad. Others were completely in support. My whole take on the piece was that after looking at it and everything and being an active duty military officer myself, looked at it, and while I support mom's breastfeeding, it's natural and it's got the highest nutrition for the kids out there. It's the best for them. Just my opinion, the information facts I've looked at. What I did find is they did it in uniform and there was no sign or notification that it had been approved by their chain of command. Therefore, they were they were in violation of army regulations stating that you cannot wear the uniform to show endorsement and support you know to a cause without approval from your chain of command since then i just found found out yesterday both service women have been reprimanded by the chain of command for violating that exact uniform code so Chain of Command apparently felt the same way I did, even though being that, you know, I, t I take no guilt and f feel nothing wrong with having stated that because I know from having been in 13 years, it takes more than two weeks to process that kind of paperwork, so they were already working on it when I made my comment. You know, don't feel bad at all. But in a follow-up to the fact that they have now been reprimanded by their Chains of Command for violation of regulations, Miss Scott, who is kind of the lead, one of the lead personnel and representatives in the Moms to Mom breastfeeding organization 
has and who did organize, orchestrate, and set up the photographs and media piece that they did has been fired at from her job as an x-ray technician. She claims it was because of the photos and because of sexual bias on her work pe workplace, but doing some digging into it, what I found was that she had clocked in, clocked in for work, picked up several time-sensitive jobs for the day, and then nobody could find her. Time elapsed and passed on a couple of her jobs, and they weren't turned in. They started trying to contact her, and after numerous cell phone calls and trying to get hold of her and find her, they finally reached her, and she said she was too sick. She wasn't going to be able to get everything done that day. Okay, well, they, the job, job materials weren't there to be given to somebody else, and she wasn't there, so they apparently pulled up the GPS on her duty vehicle on her employer provided work vehicle finding its finding its location through GPS they pulled it up and found she was at a news center and apparently was doing a media interview at the time and thus was fired because basically she clocked in took time sensitive work didn't bother doing it lied about being sick and then was found to be using company time and assets to conduct and see to her personal business and agenda. I got no, and apparently it wasn't the first time. I can, you know, I got to give props to the employer on that. You got an employee screwing up like that, messing around on your time, your dime. In, to, in this day and age when jobs are so hard to find, especially good, good paying jobs, Require good certifications, but well-paying jobs are hard to find. You get rid of them and find a new one. It's too easy. If you've got a job like that, you've got to take the value in it. Well, gang, that's my episode for today. Thank you for showing up. Leave me your comments down below. Hit hit the like or dislike. Subscribe if you'd like to if you're somebody new. And I hope to all see, see y'all next time. Take care. Keep your head down.